Hey guys, welcome back. It is now nine o'clock on Sunday night. I wasn't gonna record it, but screw it, I'm recording it. Um, I'm painting those uh, bench parts real quick. Two uh, cast iron side arms and then a back plate. Um, I sandblasted them a few days ago to get the rust off. Um, I'm gonna spray an epoxy primer on them now and then um, put two coats of gloss black paint and that's it. Uh, no clear, nothing like that, just a single stage gloss black paint. Um, I wasn't going to record it, but you know what? I'll post this video on Monday. Uh, it gives me something to post for Monday. Uh, I want to do a shout out to my buddy Tim. He lives not far from me and, uh, and uh, he has a YouTube channel. Uh, he originally started uh, videos doing uh, guns and gun shooting. Uh, he's a really good shooter. Um, he builds some really cool cars, um, rat rods and uh, cool motorcycles and stuff like that. He has a channel called uh, Treetop Garage. I believe that's the name of it. I'll double check that. Um, but I'm gonna put his link in the description. Um, if you guys wouldn't mind, go check him out and see if you guys uh, are interested in some of the stuff he's doing. Um, he's building a rat rod right now, and he might be possibly getting another car too to work on, which would be cool, because it'll give him more content and more videos to do. He's one of them guys that can make uh, anything out of anything, you know what I mean? He, he just is real good at um, coming up with looking at something a different way than most people do. Um, he could see something, you know, like the spring and figure out something to do with it. You know what I mean? That's worthwhile. Um, he's just a real good guy. Um, check him out. Like I said, I'll put his link in the description. Um, let's go out here, put a coat of epoxy primer on these parts, and then we're going to put two coats of black, and um, we'll see what it looks like. Um, I haven't painted a bench like this in a long, long time. It's probably been 15, 20 years ago I painted one of these benches and I believe I painted it green. So let's go out there and I'm not wearing a spray suit on this. I'm not worried about dog hair or anything. They're um, cast iron legs and everything with a texture. It'll be just fine.
as you can see at the end there, I just made it with the sealer. It was uh, just about empty, but we made it, we had enough to put a good coat on all of that because that's really gonna try to lock in that cast iron to hopefully rust, not rusting for a while. Unfortunately, cast iron does tend to rust, especially when the benches sit outside. That bench is from Florida, and I think it's going back to Florida, I'm not sure. Um, so now I'm gonna get some single stage black mixed up. Um, we're gonna do two coats of that in about 15 minutes. I have the heater cranking full blast in there right now. Um, it's about 45 degrees out and I'm running both sides of my intake filters are open tonight because my exhaust filter is dirty and I didn't feel like taking it out tonight and cleaning it. So um, I'm running as much air as I can coming into the spray booth to hopefully um, vent it out through the filter that's partially clogged now from so much overspray going through it. Um, but I'm, I'm pegged with the heaters. It's on as fast as it can go, as high as it can go. It's about 82 to 84 degrees in there right now, which is not bad. Uh, when it gets really, really cold out, I'll only use one side of my exhaust or my intake filters rather than both sides. And what that does is limits how much cold air is coming into the booth because right now I'm sucking air from outside. So if it's 20 degrees outside, I'm sucking 20 degree air into the spray booth. So as it's coming into the spray booth, the heater has to heat that air up. Um, so as it gets colder and colder outside, I uh, have a harder and harder time keeping the temperature up in the spray booth. When it's about 20 degrees outside, if I'm only using one side of the intake filters, I can get it to be about 70 in there, 65 to 70. So that's where it starts to get a little tricky where you gotta start using, should I still use my slow hardener? Should I start using a medium hardener? Um, your waiting time increases between coats and stuff like that. Um, in the future, when this back part of the building is finished, I'm going to draw air from there. Once I start drawing air from the back building, it's gonna be a whole different ball game. I cannot draw air from the front building because I do not have enough square footage. So I physically do not have enough square footage in the front part of the building to make up for the air that needs to be pulled through the booth. So what happens is if I shut the air coming in from outside and just try to suck it in from the inside of the shop, it won't work. And what also happens is, is it starts taking the exhaust fumes from the furnace in the main shop and it'll start drawing them into the building, which is CO2, which you don't want to do all that. Um, we tested all this stuff before I even hooked any of this up and got it running. Um, so what happens is if, if you're not drawing from outside because the square footage in the front building, I'm actually taking the exhaust out of the regular furnace, sucking it back into the building and CO2 sensors. I have a CO2 detector in here and I have one out there and the one out there would start going off because it was getting CO2 in the building. Um, but once this back building's finished, this back area is, how many feet is it? About 2,400 square feet. That, that square footage back there should be plenty to draw from. So I'll be able to draw from there. So if I'm running the furnace in there at 70 or 80 degrees and I'm drawing from heat from in there, um, I'll be able to heat this no problem. I mean, I'll be able to spray at 90 degrees if I want to. Um, so just figure I'd give you a little ex explanation on how the spray booth works and stuff like that. And I'm still going to make a video on it. Um, as soon as I get these couple cars out of here, I'm going to clean the booth and everything. And I'm going to take the exhaust filters out and so I can show you the fan setup and everything like that. Um, but other than that, let me uh, get some paint mixed up. We're going to use that same uh, gloss black paint that we used earlier on those uh, parts for the Impalas and uh, I'm not going to put a satin clear over it because he wants this to be shiny so I'm going to mix up uh, some paint enough to do two coats which is probably going to be close to a full cup um, and then we're going to go ahead and lay out two coats of black. Um, the reason why my heat is up high right now is those cast iron parts they hold cold temperatures for a long period of time. Cast iron uh, stays cold for a long period. So it was sitting in the shop and the shop's only set at like 55 degrees right now. So in all reality, 
that cast iron is only at 55 degrees. So you want to get that cast iron to like 70 or 80 degrees. So if you start putting your paints and primers on, it doesn't run. Because if you spray primer or paint on 55 degree metal, it's going to start running. No matter how light you put it on there, it's just going to end up start running on you because it's just too cold for it. So all right, I'm going to let it sit for another 10 minutes, get this paint mixed up. We're going to go out there and put two coats of black on. Let me show you something here real quick before I mix up the paint. Take my uh, gun here, shine it on here. Metal says it's at 89.2 degrees. Can you tell it's warm? Oh, uh, that's perfect. I should have done the video of what this was before. Now, in all reality, those should be warmer than this because this is farther away from the heat. So let's check this part right here. 86.7. So that gives you a pretty good idea. This side should be even a little cooler because it's on the back side. Well, I guess it's staying the same. Okay, 85.4. A little bit different. But I always start, I use this thing in the winter time. In the summer, I don't really worry about it too much uh, because the metal is usually pretty warm because it's warm outside. But that's just another thing. Having one of those is real nice to uh, be able to, to determine when you should start spraying your metals. Um, obviously, if it's fiberglass, it's going to heat up way quicker than metal.
right, first coat, one more to go. Um, if you notice when I'm painting that back part, I'm standing off to one side when I'm on the front part. And why I'm doing that is so that it doesn't blow all on me because I don't have a suit on and I don't really want to get covered with black paint everywhere. So I'm just staying over to one side and running my gun over. Um, it's creeping up the temperature. It's about 84 degrees in there now. So um, it's definitely getting hot in there. Uh, but that's fine. I'm not worried about it. This paint doesn't really matter because it, the metal is so textured that it doesn't matter if you see a little bit of solvent pop because you're never going to see it because it's so rough textured uh, material. As long as it's shiny, that's all that matters. Um, and we have a good coat of uh, epoxy primer over the bare cast, and then we're going to have two good coats of a single stage urethane over top. So it should last quite a while before it starts rusting in. Will it start rusting again? Yeah. Because, you know, that's just how cast iron is. It just eventually rusts again. No matter how well you treat it, it always comes back. Um, so, all right, I'm going to let that dry for about 10 minutes, and then I'll come back and we'll put one more coat on. Five degrees. 
creeping down, creeping up there. Um, I don't know if I've ever shown this or not, but this is what the cups look like as they collapse inside that diaphragm. It's uh, just really uh, shrinks it in, or sucks it in rather. So I think that's going to end this video. It's just a quick video on painting this park bench. Um, this is, like I said, for my neighbor who's going to do some electrical work for me. Um, so that's going to end this video, guys. Um, I just figured why not show it, show everything I do. Um, like I said, uh, there's always a million different things I'm doing. Um, these parts right here are for the 59 Impala. These are the um, parts for the Continental kit. I'm going to paint this stuff silver. Uh, probably paint this spring black. I should have painted it. I'll just use some spray paint and I'll just spray paint these as well. It's going to wear off. That's just how that stuff works. But I uh, figured I'd let you see this stuff. Um, actually, you know what I should probably do is polish this. This is this might be stainless steel, actually. I think both of these are. Maybe I should polish these rather than uh, putting paint on them. I think that's a better choice. I'm gonna polish these and uh, paint this black. So, all right guys, that's gonna end this video. If you're liking what you're seeing, please like, subscribe. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Um, hopefully you guys are enjoying the variety of stuff I do. Um, there's always something different. So uh, hopefully you guys uh, keep watching, subscribing, and uh, we keep moving forward, guys. Thanks again. I'll see you guys later.